Hey everyone, Scott Cunningham, making Sconcy Business. Today I want to talk to you about free speech and, you know, where are we at with free speech? Because you can go out and you can generally say what you want to say, but when you're online, you know, your social presence is very, very restricted. And if the majority of your social interactions and communications are happening online, then what is free speech? Is it is it is is it okay that it's not really free because it's speech specifically or you know does speech also apply to our general online communications because you know everyone will go back to the fact that all of these companies are private companies well i'm pretty sure there should be legal restrictions based on private companies having monopolies and considering a collusion of companies that all kind of work together have more than 80% of the control of the internet, how is that not taken into consideration when we know that they're all collaborating on, you know, who to ban, who to censor, how they're going to play these games out? It's very interesting to me that people don't like think about this or, or really point to it more. If they're able to have a monopoly and we're just going to be complacent in this in in this progression as they get more and more control of the internet you know it's it's a problem because the internet has such a wide breadth and depth that if they can control 80 percent that's the majority of what people are seeing the other 20 percent is the stuff that people most people aren't going to see anyways unless they're trying to look for it right because when you're on Amazon, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Google, which includes YouTube and all the other subsidiaries of Google, like there's just so much Apple, Spotify, Tidal, uh, Medium, PayPal, any any of these big Silicon Tech Valley companies, they will censor and they have. And, you know, it's very interesting. Where are we with free speech today in terms of online presence? I really want to know what you guys think about this. Because it's interesting, in Canada, we don't even have legitimate free speech. We have freedom of expression, and laws can be placed on top of it that can suppress our freedom of expression. And they can just place any laws, you know, we, we, have, we had a law like two years ago, or I guess three now, that brought in compelled speech into Canada. So now we have compelled speech in our legislation, which is basically the opposite of free speech. And, you know, it's interesting. It's like the rhetoric that's coming from these online platforms is slowly trickling down into our actual freedom of expression and free speech legislation and how we can speak in public in general. Because there's a difference between not saying something offensive and saying something and someone taking it as an offensive thing and and now it really seems to be that you know hate speech isn't real it's really just who is offended how offended are they and how far are they going to go to ensure that other people are aware that you have offended them and based on that you'll either get banned or suspended or whatever will happen to your online presence so it's really just based on the outrage, not the actual act. And we can see that because of the MAGA hat incident where the kid actually didn't do anything. But because the outrage was so intense, the school was ready to expel them. It's based on, you know, how offended you are, how upset you are, how much are you going to complain, how much are you going to report, how many people, what's the volume. That's what it's like now. It's not what's the actual, you know, crime being committed. Because... If that were the case, then they would say, oh, I think the president, you know, is in a scandal. Let's take a vote. If everyone thinks he's in a scandal, we throw him in jail. It's like, I don't think that's how evidence works. But that's what's being pushed right now against free speech. And thing is, if you really believe in free speech, you have to also advocate for the free speech of your opposition, of your, of your enemies, of your rivals. Because if they don't have free speech as well, then then no one has free speech because you're censoring them. So you have to have legitimate free speech for all. And that means no hate speech, no anti-speech laws that can just be placed, you know, 
as needed or just whenever they need to add another law to the legislation that suppresses free speech in Canadian legislation, they can just do it with no problem because we have freedom of expression, not real freedom of speech. And it's more of a, like a, a free, like it, it's a freedom because it's not a right. And that's, and that's kind of how they word it. But that's, that's, that's what I've seen. Anyways, I want you guys to let me know in the comments what you think about all this. Leave me a, you know, leave me a comment. Leave me your thoughts. I'd love to know. What do you think about freedom of expression, free speech that we're in today, advocating for free speech for your enemies? Where do you think we're headed with free speech? Where do you think everything is going? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you guys. And as always, keep keeping on. I'm Scott Cunningham, aka Scottsy Business, signing off. Cheers.